Hi, this is Aaron Hackney, product owner for Cisco Defense Orchestrator. And today I'd like to do a quick video on logging to the Cisco cloud from your FTD devices and your ASA devices. So let's start by taking a look at our topology. As you know, the ASA platform has been around for a long time, and as such, it's not cloud aware. In order for the ASA to send logs securely to the cloud, we're going to need to install something locally called the Secure Events Connector. Now the Secure Events Connector is just a Docker container that we make available to you, either through a VM image that we supply to you, where you just install it under VMware, or you can run your own Ubuntu installation and simply install Docker in the Docker containers and run them natively in your own Docker ecosystem. Either way, the SEC is involved, and what happens is it takes the logs locally from your ASA, and that could be across your network in clear text, UDP, and it can take those across your local LAN to the SEC, and then the SEC is going to package that up in a TLS tunnel and send that up to the Cisco cloud to a service we call SSX, or the Security Services Exchange. Now, the SSX is a SaaS that takes all of your events from your ASAs and your other devices and makes them available on the Cisco Events Bus. And so it makes services like XDR or Cisco Defense Orchestrator or any number of other Cisco-hosted services to have access to your eventing data to provide additional value. Once that hits the events bus, Cisco Defense Orchestrator stores that information for you in a service that we call Security Analytics and Logging. So again, the packet flow goes from the ASA to the SEC to the SSX, and finally landing up inside of CDO, where it's available to you through our event viewer. Now, the FTD is a lot newer platform, as you know, and the FTD is cloud aware. The FTD is fully aware of what Cisco Defense Orchestrator is. It takes the telemetry that it generates from the Snort engine inside of the FTD and natively sends it over to the SSX, which also makes that information available on the events bus. And that's just a real brief simplified overview of how the events get from your Cisco secure firewalls to the Cisco cloud. Now let's take a look at the individual configuration pieces that might be of interest to us. Let's start with the FTD. The first place you're going to check out your secure cloud logging services will be under Tools and Services and Firewall Management Center. And down here on the right hand side, you're going to see a little gear icon that says Cisco Cloud Events. Now this is specifically for FTD. And what this allows us to do is configure what we're actually going to send to the Cisco Secure Cloud. And then we have to determine whether we wanted to log all connection events or if we only want to log connection events related to security events. In other words, when there's an IPS event that happens, uh, then log the security events only, or uh, as most folks do, we probably want to log all events. So we'll just move that radio button and make sure that it's over here at all events. So that determines what gets logged to the cloud. Now we're not done. If that was the only thing that I turned on, I wouldn't be seeing any events yet either. We need to make sure that inside of our security policies that we have logging turned on or the specific access control policy rules that we'd like to capture. So what you'll see here is I've just got two rules in this particular very simple access control policy, one set to trust, one set to allow. Uh, specifically, I'm going to look at this trust event, and you'll notice that I've got this little uh, icon of a, of a paper note, which basically says, hey, you've turned logging on for this particular event. If it was not turned on, when you get inside of your rule, we'd go over here to the logging option inside of the actual rule, and then we would select where we want them to be logged, at the beginning of the connection, at the end of the connection, et cetera, right? And again, uh, this is sort of the default setting. Nothing is being logged on any rule by default, so you're going to need to go into each rule and enable the logging. Best practice really is just to log at the end of the connection, unless you're looking at a block rule. There is no end of connection with a block rule. Now for block rules, for example, my default policy here at the bottom shows the access control policy default to block all traffic. And again, by default, you're probably not logging that. So again, this is something you might want to do to make sure you're capturing the, the packets that you've actually blocked from your firewall. You'll notice that there is no log at end of connection available. That's because this is a default block and blocks don't have end of connections because the three-way handshake's never established and therefore there is no end of connection to log, right? And so we just have that one option to select there. So now that we know we've, we've configured what we want to log, now that that's deployed, let's go ahead and run some traffic through our firewall and see if we can see the logs coming across in, in real time. 
So what I have set up in my environment is this firewall that we just looked at, Cygnus, which is a virtual firewall that I have running here in my lab. Now inside of my lab, I've also got the Cisco uh, Trex packet generator. So this is a traffic generator that Cisco makes available. It's open source, uh, it's free, available out there on the internet for you. If you check this video's description, I've got some links there on some simplified installation and how to use the Trex packet generator. But in the meantime, we're just gonna go ahead and run some, some traffic through this firewall. So I'm gonna go over to CDO. I'm gonna go to the analytics tab, go to event logging, and I'm gonna click on the live button. I'm gonna go to my Trex packet generator, go ahead and fire up my, uh, my capture. So what it is is I've got a profile here that has some saved traffic, both TCP and UDP traffic, uh, that's gonna shoot across my network now and, and put this firewall under load and actually put some traffic across it to generate some events. So here we see events being sent across, sent and received. And so if I go back over to CDO, now it does take a little bit of time for those events to be transmitted from the FTD up to the Cisco cloud uh, and make them available inside of the event viewer. But once they're here, they're stored and we can see that traffic and we've got access to all the data uh, associated with it. So you'll see here, if I'm gonna go ahead and stop, pause this live event flow, and we'll see some things that have happened here. We see, again, this they hit that trust rule where we enabled our logging for earlier. And we can see all the typical things you would expect to see in the event, uh, including which rule specifically in the policy that it hit, the policy that it hit, the IPS policy that it was involved, and all the other things that you might wanna see in a particular connection event. In addition to that, you can see we've got some other traffic that was blocked. So this is some return traffic that was blocked uh, coming from the other direction where we didn't have an allow rule. And here we can see that it went from the outside interface, hit the outside interface and was blocked because again, it fell through th to the default action. Remember we turned on logging for the default action that said log all blocked packets from the default firewall rule. That's exactly what happened here. So that's the FTD. It's pretty straightforward. Now for the ASA, it's, it's pretty straightforward as well. Um, so if I go do a show run log, uh, we'll see our logs. And you can see that I am sending my logs out to this particular host, which is my SEC, right? Now let's see what that looks like inside of CDO. If we go and take a look inside of CDO, we can actually under tools and services, we'll find a secure connectors button. Under secure connectors, we'll see that I've already got an SDC and an SEC deployed in this environment. That matches this device right here. So I've got this Ubuntu server where I've installed Docker and pulled the SDC and SEC containers using the script that I mentioned earlier. So the SEC is already up and running and we can see here inside of CDO that it is alive and healthy. Now here's where it's a little bit interesting. If I click on the SEC inside of CDO, it will actually list the ports that this device is listening for traffic locally. So the SEC locally is looking for UDP syslog traffic to arrive on port 10025. It's looking for syslog traffic to arrive locally, TCP port 10125. And it'll even collect NetFlow data uh, listening on port 10425. So it will also relay the NetFlow data from your ASA up to the CDO cloud and make that available as well inside of the event viewer. So I'm going to use UDP port 10025 uh, and that's where I'm going to send my syslog to and you can see here that my syslog listener is at this IP address 172.30.4.162 and we can see here that I'm already sending my syslogs out here to 172.30.4.162 on protocol 17 which is UDP uh, and port 10025. Well, what, what are we sending to the SEC? What syslogs? Well, that's what the line above it is for. Logging trap tells us what logging level that we want to send to the logging host, in this case, uh, out here on this IP address and port. And I currently have it sent to informational, so I'm going to get way more information that I would normally need. But because we have it set to informational, we should be getting some logging events if I do something like a write mem or any kind of a configuration. So we can actually send some traffic using Packet Tracer, or we can just do an operation like write mem, and we should see up inside of the CDO cloud, if I go back to analytics and event logging, I'm gonna set my filter to only show ASA events, and I'm gonna put it in live mode instead of historical, and let's see if we can't catch some events coming from the ASA directly to uh, the Cisco cloud. 
So I'll issue a command like no names, for example. I'll do a write mem. And sure enough, we've got some logs that are starting to come through from the ASA. And if I put a pause here, we can see, oh, uh, somebody began configuration. That's when I did my conf T, right? Um, and we can see that we've got some other logs as well. Uh, so I uh, did a write mem command at some point. Uh, and, and again, I've got this logging set up at a ridiculously verbose level, but we can see here that uh, we've got some things that have been logged from that ASA. Once again, going from the ASA to the SEC up to SSX. And once it hits the SSX bus, it's available to our tenant over here in CDO and available in our event viewer. So that's just a real quick look at the architecture overview of CDO and how events get from your devices on premises, no matter where they live, uh, whether it's virtual, physical, uh, private cloud, public cloud, it all works the same. The, the events get to the SSX service. Once it hits the SSX service, those events are available to the Cisco data bus, in which point they are consumed by CDO, XDR, or whatever service you're using in the Cisco security platform. That's it for this quick video. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.